My name is Christoph Stuckerberger. I'm uh, moderating this session. It's a great uh, pleasure to have this um, webinar on cyber ethical challenges, or now we call it learning, because we want to look at not only problems, but solutions in this uh, tough COVID time, where most of you may still live in lockdown at home, uh, some may go out uh, in a uh, few Asian countries, but uh, Europe, uh, Africa, uh, US, South America is mainly still locked. And I see um, many among you from Africa, uh, most welcome, and uh, some from Asia. And uh, for South America, it's a bit early in the morning, but uh, uh, we may have some, we'll see in the discussion. We have uh, the honor to have this time four speakers instead of three last week. Uh, uh, Zibu Jafta from South Africa, raise your hand. Um, most welcome. Uh, you are uh, from South Africa and the ethics uh, officer at UNISA, University of South Africa, and also our uh, coordinator for Southern Africa of Globe Ethics Net. I welcome Pavan. Um, can you switch on your video with your nice face? Uh, Christoph, I'm trying to switch on my video, but we can continue. There's some technical glitch. Okay, you will uh, make it after. Uh, sure. Pavan Dugal, who is the initiator, in fact, uh, of this uh, idea. He is a uh, cyber law expert in China and he uh, in India and he is um, uh, a law uh, also an advocate at the high uh, supreme court in India and also member of the board of globethics.net and uh, we coordinate and cooperate on uh, cyber ethical issues thank you pavan for joining us and we have um, uh, Professor Trivantian, also called Moses, from China. He is uh, the, an entrepreneur from uh, Bringspring Company, a company uh, directly involved in topics of concern today, as he, his companies has four companies in cyber um, health services. Uh, uh, we will say more about it. Unfortunately, he cannot join us. Uh, we just got a message uh, a short time ago. He was called by his main um, shareholder of his companies uh, to, for an urgent meeting. So um, he apologizes and I will present his presentation. Um, with that, I think we can start. The topic of uh, today, as I said, we want to look at uh, specifically the cyber related um, aspects of this pandemic. How, what does it mean? What does it mean in terms of um, our behavior, our uh, data protection, our legal environment, but also our practical use of it in our um, daily work. Many of you are working within universities and uh, there we have this whole issue of online learning um, and how does it affect it in equal, equal access or unequal access, all these questions we will cover. I'll start with the um, presentation of uh, Mr. Trivantian. He's a professor of economics also, not only an entrepreneur. And um, just a second slideshow. Yeah. Yes, so can you see it? Can you see the slideshow? Okay. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, yes. so yes. it's about data security, privacy, and help in Chinese ethical perspective. It's very good that we have people from China 
in our uh, global ethics network and in the cyber unity the university network of Pavan Dugal, because uh, China is of course um, daily in the media about how do we deal with uh, with uh, with this uh, pandemic which started in China but also China as leading in uh, fighting it uh, with a lot of uh, levels we learned a lot I think from the fast reactions they had in in uh, in um, with their experience from past pandemics how to deal with it with lockdowns and all the rest but also with the question of technology so he uh, uh, Moses uh, uh, Professor Trevantian is um, <clears throat> founder of Bring Spring uh, company, the medical product line of Spring Spring, as well engaged with the delicacy management process of hospitals departments from the management of outpatient department. So he has a lot of outpatient departments who use now the software that they develop, emergency department and critical care department, surgical anesthesia management and so on. Over 3,000 medical care institutions have been using BrainSpring scientific products, mainly in China, some in Africa already, in Kenya and others. Uh, he's also delivering this software for leading uh, top universities, to top hospitals, also university hospitals in China. Over 50% of the top 100 grade hospitals in China are BrainSpring's clients. And um, that shows this uh, question and uh, how to deal with um, medical devices, online devices in such a pandemic. And you see here some of the products um, from emergency calls via um, a mobile device to uh, even distant um, medical services. You see it here, um, release of hospital information also, uh, I've seen it myself in China. When you go there, you can have with this app, uh, if you have a disease or a, an accident or something, you, you click on your, on your uh, in China it's called WeChat, what we call WhatsApp, and you can find the, the closest hospital which delivers this service of the problem that you have. Or you have a heart attack and then, um, uh, so it's um, a software to find the, in the shortest possible uh, time, the relevant services in your uh, environment or neighborhood. It's also used for rural areas where no hospitals are available, which is uh, in, in, in vast China, uh, of course, in many places the case. So outpatients who look for the next hospital. Uh, expert scheduling, clinic decision making, which is then also based on uh, telemedicine and uh, big data. You see here some of the services from emergency calls for a for a, um, a hospital car to screening to entry um, to diagnosis and so on. Um, there, so it's a software which, of course, is now on one hand very needed and that's why um, the business wise is very uh, much in demand um, at the same time we all know these uh, critical questions especially about uh, data protection and this is uh, also linked to the tracking system in china um, i read just the, the the red one as a cyber hospital uh, he stores many customers' health data in the database, but the property right of this data does not belong to the company, so we do not have the right to use the customer's data. And uh, it seems that even where in internationally, I think there is some uh, uh, suspicion if the government uh, has access to some data, but the, according to uh, Professor Tivantian, he says that uh, much uh, is done in terms of additional data privacy now in China. This tracking system is only allowed to be used in an emergency. Of course, that will be a question. Uh, how do you control that the data are then not used 
after the pandemic or uh, in non-emergency situations. Uh, Professor Tivantian also says in the last sentence here, Chinese society is increasingly concerned about the protection of the privacy of individuals. But we will see in the next presentation that we have differences, cultural differences around the world in that. But uh, uh, the tracking system is broadly accepted in China as um, um, it is also used uh, before the pandemic already. Uh, a big uh, topic uh, for uh, Professor Tivantian is also the fake news challenge. Um, as we all know, we all are journalists. We are self-made media uh, maker. We can put our information easily on YouTube, on our social media, and uh, without uh, big control. There is um, an additional control coming in, but uh, normally um, um, the, the control of Facebook, of uh, the other social media is still weak. We'll come back to that. And it shows that um, uh, this is around the world an issue. And uh, he makes some recommendations. Uh, first of all, read the serious media. And we have seen today that uh, during the pandemic, the, the serious media have an increase in visitors and uh, readers, whereas the, uh, whereas the, the uh, social media are more in a crisis because of lack of credibility. Uh, to use social media critically, because we, uh, I, I read a, a news today that uh, YouTube has about 25% false videos, which is a, a big issue, of course, how as users can we distinguish what is right and what is uh, fake. Forward videos from social media only after reflection, because uh, we are used to forward a video, we like a video, we just click on send to all, and then it's already spread like a virus. If it's a, a fake news, we are actors in spreading fake news. Uh, there are also fact checkers platform, which uh, give daily information about uh, these fake news. Uh, there are journalists, journalist um, uh, consortia who help us to work on that. And then also to compare newspapers, for example, New York Times and this, um, the uh, uh, China uh, um, South China Morning Post, which is uh, quite uh, so, uh, um, diff very differentiated and uh, detailed platform. So these are his um, um, short inputs on from a Chinese perspective. Thank you very much. With that, um, we plan to have all four presentations together first, and then we go to the discussion. So please note your remarks that you have um, for uh, one of us uh, speakers. We go straight to the second presentation of myself, which um, I have um, we have heard from uh, uh, the presentation of uh, Trivantian. That is the question of why is it that, uh, and how is it that the tracking system is accepted so differently? You may have heard that in Europe uh, last weekend, we had a lot of uh, demonstrations in the street of people who say, I don't want to wear masks. I don't want to be tracked or to track um, to help uh, eradicate this virus. Um, so there is a, a protest movement coming on. And on the other hand, we have um, um, uh, not this kind of resistance in Asian countries. And on this uh, slide, I compared um, the different, just a few countries as selected. Um, if we look at the state form, um, we see one party systems like uh, China 
we see multi-party systems like China and Korea, South Korea, politically different systems, but both have a strong discipline culture, which uh, allowed them to uh, defeat the virus in relatively short time. Of course, not over, can come back, but uh, still much better than other countries. We could also add Taiwan, uh, New Zealand, um, and uh, the leadership, uh, I call them strong and rational. Um, trust in government is high. We can see that in trust barometers. Um, and they, the lockdown was done fast. The discipline is high. So that's a specific culture that I observe. And uh, I call it, uh, if you see on the top of this uh, um, uh, table, discipline culture where discipline following the order of the government is higher than in other countries. And then we have, so to say, the freedom type of countries, the democracies in the West, uh, but also South Korea is a democracy, New Zealand is a democracy, uh, but uh, uh, another culture where it is much more difficult to implement this um, this uh, kind of uh, uh, compulsory and mandatory behavior from the population. Nevertheless, we have uh, here also differences, for example, Switzerland, Germany, Norway, and other countries. I call them reliable and rational in the leadership style. Uh, also high uh, trust in government, according to the trust barometers but not as fast as the Asian countries with a lockdown, but with good infrastructure and with relatively uh, reasonable low uh, number of deaths and infections. But then we have the other countries like US, uh, UK, Italy, Brazil, now with a, a huge uh, increase and uh, with a majority populist opportunist uh, leadership with um, not well organized, if I may say, uh, countries are uh, politically motivated uh, and not medically motivated uh, structures where it is much more difficult to implement this kind of, of uh, measures like lockdown and uh, uh, tracing. And then we have uh, the countries which are uh, mainly also um, defined by scarcity, they want to do, but they may not have the means to do uh, and to control. So um, many of the African countries took uh, very decisive measures, uh, even though the, until now the, the number of um, um, known um, infections was low. So when we, next one, when you look at uh, this as a uh, statistic also, which came out uh, very recently, uh, two weeks, uh, one or two weeks ago, uh, I'm willing to give up more on my personal health and location tracking information. Uh, China, India is also high, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and then it goes down. France has only half of the people of China who accept um, a tracing, um, tracing uh, records. Uh, that shows the, uh, an ethical issue. How do we deal with the discipline and with freedom? Next one. We <clears throat> see the same here on the world map. Uh, blue, dark blue in Asia, uh, very clear. Uh, it's about uh, cultural influence on tracing, accepting the tracing. App. In, in Africa, we see differences. Uh, some countries like Southern Africa have a higher acceptance than Central Africa or Northern Africa. So it's not united in their response. <clears throat> Next one. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's just what I summarized. Next one. Now, this has to do uh, with, uh, with trust and uh, um, the new trust barometer so shows that it's the 
Edelman Trust Barometer, you may know it, that um, the trust in governments increased substantially in the uh, period February, March, April. But it's interesting that now the critique comes back. So I think the trust in governments maybe may go down again in the next period uh, of uh, when the lockdown is, uh, is over and people uh, start criticizing more than before. Next one. Now, what is important for us in uh, education is the question of uh, um, how does this uh, online um, elements uh, influence our teaching, our university system, but I will skip that because uh, um, we will see hear that in the next uh, presentation more in detail. And I'm coming to uh, conclusions in the next one, where um, the question we want to raise today is this question of what are solutions in this, uh, and what is the contribution of the cyber world, so to say, to these, all these efforts. And um, I think one observation is that the political culture uh, is very key, but not so much if it's a democracy or not a democracy, but the credibility of the leadership. And uh, I think that is one of the, of the outcome. Uh, the credibility of the leadership is very different and also the trust in the leadership based on historic um, experiences. We know that, for example, in Southern Europe, uh, the trust in governments is much lower since centuries than in Central and Northern Europe. In Africa, we also see differences of cultures in trust in leadership. Now, one is um, a conclusion I want to make is we, I'm convinced that we should, and that's an ethical issue, we should uh, learn from the Asian countries that discipline is not only negative, as some Western countries uh, say, uh, discipline that's military or that's uh, uh, faith-based uh, organizations, that's oppression, and we want freedom, no discipline, especially in such a, a, a situation of common threats through a, a global virus, discipline and especially self-leadership is important. Um, also self-leadership, I think all of us uh, experience now staying two months at home needs a lot of self-discipline and self-discipline is an ethical value we should rediscover in cultures where that was not the case. On the other hand, we have to see that um, freedom in East Asian countries is also important. And the first slide uh, of, uh, or the last slide of Moses told us that also in China and other Asian countries, the, the uh, sensitivity about cyber data control and abuse is uh, increasing. Uh, the last uh, comment, populist governments failed and sacrificed lives. I'm here quite harsh, but uh, when we read uh, what uh, is the explosion now, uh, according to today's newspapers in Brazil, where um, a populist uh, government abuses the power to, to uh, to make politics instead of saving lives. You imagine that uh, the, they have no health minister in, in Brazil uh, now because the second one stepped down after one month. Uh, such a crisis is uh, life threatening. So freedom and responsibility cannot be separated. They belong together. That's my ethical message. And we come to the last slide. <coughs> Uh, which is uh, on privacy, ethical solution in emergencies, saving lives has higher priority than protecting privacy. Um, Dr. Pavan Dukal may say more about that, but uh, I think that's one ethical conclusion I have. Emergencies are like war or a, a catastrophe, a tsunami, a pandemic, and um, um, protecting privacy 
is below the saving lives value. Uh, but that does not mean that after a pandemic, we can um, um, continue with an emergency ethic, so to say. And on online education, we come back, as we see, it's much about equal access, equal and affordable access to online services. Thank you very much. That's my contribution.